Japan has always been leaders, indeed pioneers, when it comes to both innovation and technology. From your very first portable TV, microwave, and even your phone, it's led the way. But when it comes to autonomous driving, well, its rivals have taken the lead. Nissan only introduced its ProPilot semi-autonomous driving aids in 2016, but things are going to get a lot more advanced when our cars in Australia finally arrive with what I'm driving now, the ProPilot 2.0. Now, it's a bit confusing because I'm driving this in a 2019 Nissan Skyline sedan, a car we will never ever see in Australia. But the technology embedded in it, well, that's coming one day soon. So we're very familiar with driverless tech now, but the difference with this Nissan ProPilot 2 is, well, just how smooth it is. It's, uh, it's keeping lane by itself right now. And where other cars sort of do this weird sort of bouncing off the white lines, virtual white lines, this car just tracks dead straight in the center of the line. It's really clever, it's really smooth, and it's quite relaxing in a way that others aren't. So despite not having to have your hands on the wheel, there's one thing, one crucial thing about how ProPilot 2 works. You have to keep your eyes on the road and you can see there's a message there saying, look forward. So you can have quick cheeky glances to over there, you know, check out the mountains and sky view. But ultimately, you, you have to look ahead. You have to stay in charge of the vehicle. You have to be in control. Otherwise, this is not playing ball. Next is when you do want to change lanes, you have to indicate and then it asks for you to put your hands back on the wheel. It still steers itself, but it just has an extra level of security that if something happens, you're there to take control. And I think that's the crucial thing about this driving aid is at all times, the driver remains responsible. So this is not sort of level four autonomy. This is not even technically level three. So this isn't eyes off driving, but it's still very impressive. I also like the fact here is it's actually pointing out that there's a truck in front, not a car, a truck. So it's got a little image on a heads up display pointing, yeah, that it, well, it's just letting you know that it can see the truck ahead. It's very reassuring. But there are some serious disadvantages with ProPilot 2.0. And the first is it relies on Geo mapping, HD, high definition geo mapping, something that we don't have in Australia. So the reason why it can track so dead straight in the lanes, it can go around these corners like we're going now really, really smoothly, is it, it knows what's ahead. So it's not just reading what's directly ahead of it. It's also quite amusing to point out that when you do go through a tunnel, the thing doesn't know what's going on. It doesn't know where it is. So again, you have to regain control. So it's far from perfect, but at the moment, it just works so smoothly in Japan. It just, yeah, it feels so much better than some of the German rivals and the Tesla that can just sometimes make huge mistakes. So I've now spent a few hours with the Nissan ProPilot 2, and I think it's jumped to the top of the class for semi-autonomous driving aids. It's smooth, you can trust it, unlike a lot of its rivals, and it really, really works in Japan, and that's the problem. But I've heard that Australia is beginning to map its roads in HD Geo Maps, so maybe this technology will be introduced, well, in the next couple of years. And when it does, I think people will be able to trust it and enjoy it the same way we can in Japan. <laughs> 